previously on Sailing Ruby Rose. So you went 1370. Crew full, 200 mile shakedown cruise. So after the relative insanity of the last three days, looks like the last few hours is going to be none of what I signed up for. Leg one finished. We have a two day downwind sail. It's been a trip of clearly two distinct legs. Upwind the hammering and downwind very pleasant. I think we averaged 8.1 knots yesterday. Richard, the CEO, has been sat making notes for two days as to things that he wants to improve, tweak, change, make sure it runs slightly more appropriately. It's a very interesting insight into the process of taking a new boat and not just going, yeah, it's great, that works. It's about thrashing the tits off it and then working out what needs to be improved. Welcome back Sailing Ruby Rose. I am back in the factory. This is hole three, that's Ruby Rose two. And today I'm gonna to run through with you what happens now? Like, why are you back in the factory? Well, I'm back in the factory because Ruby Rose two still has work to do, but it's important to explain to you what happens after the test sail. What happens once they get off and they find things that they're like, oh, can we make that better? Can we make it better? Yes, they can. And that is what they're doing. So. Keep watching, this is going to be super interesting. Hole one back. Interesting, because lots of little tweaks, little things. Little things that, for instance, aren't quite there yet. And actually, is that a failure? Would we consider that to be a problem? Of course not. Of course it's not a problem, because if you find a problem, and this is what these test cells are for, and you turn around and you say, well, that's not quite right. Let's modify that and make sure that it is right. That's a success. Again, the first time you bake a cake, you don't expect it to go 100%. You modify the ingredients, you fix things as we get onto hole one, and then you come back when it's all right. And I'm gonna give you some examples. We're on hole one now. And obviously she's been stripped out and there's some little blue marks where they found little dings, little things that need to be corrected, damage that we may have done, and it will all get put right. But I'm gonna kind of show you where, actually, you know what? We need to do something here. And this is just a simple one. This is the uh, master hull. You may have seen from subsequent episodes, us moving through here, me moving through here and going, well, it's pretty rough here. I'm doing this as I'm getting thrown around. This is a natural grab point, but it's not meant to be grabbed. So handrail, they're gonna put a nice handrail across here. And it's just one of those things that has to be put right before, before you get the final boat there. So this and their list of modifications, their list of little tweaks are all part of a design process. And I, I'm not privy to that list, by the way, and I shouldn't be, I'm not, I'm not a boat builder, but all these little things will get done and they have a little bit of work to do here to just to get this all right. That is why from a confidence perspective, I have full confidence in this. So yes, that process will take probably another two or three weeks, and then you have a perfect boat. I am very, very pleased that they're not just letting this boat out of the stable. So yes, this is still actually, I mean, it's only just been pulled out of the water. So there's still like all the props and the modeling chute, there's plants, hats, all sorts of stuff. Well, that will all get taken aside. So yeah, this boat is just back, but actually it's time to show you Ruby Rose 2 because now that this is done, I'll be splitting the episode between showing you what the mods are on this, what the tweaks are, and then showing you how that is an implemented down the range. So it's all very, very interesting. And again, I know we've gone through storage here, but you have to kind of appreciate that all this is being taken out, these parts here. This is hole one. And if you remember hole one from a few weeks ago on the test sale, you can see that, you know, this is now in a state that was, is uh, all pulled apart. Let me just go down and do this again. So again, things that we've talked about, handrail, putting a handrail there. I thought handrail, but Richard Ward actually said, why not just put a nice kind of like a wooden rail, which has kind of got a grip on it, which aesthetically is better. And again, pulling all these parts out again to make sure that where they are not happy, where everything needs to be changed, they will be doing this. So there are modifications to be made and these things all take time. So yes, modification, modification, and it's all part of a build process, so fantastic. And I wanted to show you, I think it's time to get onto Ruby Rose 2. 
but let's just get on board have a good look at that and get all this done make sure i don't crack the boat who's trying to clean his stuff okay come on in let us just take us to show you our boat because it's a different boat different specification now what have we got now everything's in blue if you remember from before all the blue parts but the nav desk other bits and bobs that are being done we are literally everything here is being changed we have a different a different arrangement there are still some parts we're designing on plug outlets uh, blinds in here and working with Mary on, on like the final design for our workshop but again so the bones of the exterior are identical the interior of Ruby Rose 2 is going to be it's actually going to be the first time you've seen it so it will be very very different because we have designed this boat for long distance sailing and that's the whole thing that we've worked with Sealand about making sure that we've got this boat set up for long distance work so for instance we've set this up for long distance work but again, we have opted, and I'm just going to walk past this lovely lady. I said, no, no, I'm okay. This, for us, is going to be a second workstation. We don't want this, the additional storage. So this, for us, is a second workstation with a GPO so that we can put stuff away. The design for this locker is different for us. And it's different for us because we want a door on this. And so this is going to be storage of light things that go forward so that we can keep the entire boat free of stuff being left all over the place as you see this boat come together you're going to notice big differences between this boat and uh and, you know and other boats and again it's just personal preference we as i said oops have designed our boat for offshore sailing and every owner has got different wants and needs but ours is a passage maker a big long distance passage maker and our permanent home so I think no one has seen yet at the barbecue. Which is this? Woo. Nice. So for those of you that are going to be crewing on Ruby Rose 2, I will be making sausages and steaks and a vegetarian option later. So this, this is our, our gas barbecue. Ooh, nice, nice to see finally. And again, if you remember the videos we had of the 1260 when we were in Queensland, with that barbecue, it's like we used it every single day. It's brilliant. Cooking outside in the tropics, getting the heat out of the galley, it's necessitous. You can't not have it. But again, personal preference, same way. Now we've got hull three, Dan and Kirsten, their boat will be done differently. Four, five, six, seven, eight, all boats made very, very differently. So that is exactly where we're going with this. The next couple of months are going to be literally us just making sure that the boat that we get, that Ruby Rose 2, is exactly how an offshore long distance sailance would have a boat set up. So that's us. So listen, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed a little kind of like insight into what we're doing, why the episodes don't stop, because this next boat is going to be very different to other boats. And we hope you take some ideas from that. As I said, we've spent four years working with Seawind to kind of make sure that these ideas come to exactly, you know, they're realized so that we get the boat that allows any offshore sailor to go offshore should they want to. So what do you think? Ruby Rose 2, very, very different. Lots of, lots of changes to that. And we will be all over the process of showing you exactly how this boat is going to be set up to be a dedicated blue water cruising catamaran. I am very, very excited about this. Anyway, I'm off to Australia. Teresa and I are gonna have a, a catching up to do some, you know, we're gonna catch up in Australia. Can't wait. I will see you all next week. Take care, leave us a comment, give us a thumbs up, give us a like. The comments are so valuable because actually they're really informative. We have so many people actually picking up on things. They're like, actually, what about that? Creates an amazing set of questions that actually form part of the process of how this boat is designed and completed. So if you enjoyed that, I will see you all very, very soon. Have a lovely weekend. Take care of yourselves. Goodbye.